Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of the Dark Table. In this episode I would like to respond to request from Michal Schenka. I quote, I would be very interested in seeing an edit of a concert photo, color balance when you have colored lights, highlight reconstruction of for example the spotlights, denoising and so forth. He also provided me with his own examples from his own shooting and I have chosen three of them and we will now see how can we improve them with dark table. So well, let's get started. Our first example is quite difficult one. On the left we have a row file on the right the JPEG and as you can see we have a lot of issues here. We have um, quite intense uh, light beams on the back and those light beams are also two different colors blue and as I can recognize some kind of red or orangey and we don't have any or quite a low intensity front light or fill light. There is the one issue. The other issue is we have also overexposure here in those areas and as you can see on that light cones we also have a color shift. So that will be quite challenging task. So let's see how can we improve that. Interestingly, when we open our row file in Darkroom, we have slightly different appearance of our scene. And the good news is we don't have those color shifts here on the light cones of the blue light beams, but we have quite high oversaturation there, especially in these highlights areas. And as you can see, we have uh, some dark edges on the gradient and also those blotches on the hair of the woman or here on the hand and so on. This is quite typical issue that uh, you can have if you're uh, taking photos with quite intense blue LED light. And the question is, what is the, what is causing this? So let's see what a dark table documentation says about that. We are now in Darktable user manual and under the topic about color calibration and subtopic gamut compression we have nice description of the issue. Most camera sensors are slightly sensitive to invisible UV wavelengths which are recorded on the blue channel and produce imaginary color colors. Once corrected by the input color profile these colors will end up out of gamut that, that is it may no longer be possible to represent certain colors as a valid RGB triplet with positive values in the working color space and produce visual artifacts in gradients. You can recognize clearly that issue here. The chromatic adaptation may also push other valid colors out of gamut and at the same time pushing any already out of gamut colors even further out of gamut. Okay. How can we now use that knowledge to improve our photo? So the keyword was gamut compression. When we now go to the color calibration module, we have under the CAT <coughs> first tab, we have the gamut compression option, which can we use and try to get rid of those oversaturated areas in the blue. So we can go a little bit further and as you can see, we are improving our photo quite uh, nicely, but it's not enough. <coughs> the other thing what uh, we also could do is the uh, when we go to the Filmic and under these Options tab, we have Preservation of Chrominance algorithm, algorithms and we can disable this one because in this light situation um, also those preservation of chrominance can can uh, add some issues. Now we have done that and as you can see we have already a nice improvement in our light cones of the blue uh, beams. And the third thing we what can we do is to go back to the color calibration and saturate the blue channel. So we can go now to the color furnace and saturate a little bit of blue channel 
And we have situation like this now. Now to, to um, <coughs> compensate that uh, um, desaturation of the blue channel, we can add a little bit saturation to the red one. And we have now improved our light cones of the blue uh, beams. Okay, how can we improve our photo even further? Now I can do first um, denoising and maybe lens correction. Actually, I should do that first, but I want to explain the, the issue first. And now we can see that um, we have a little bit lost our saturation in the photo and we need to brighten it a tiny bit. So let's brighten it uh, real quick with tone equalizer. I will use only one preset, this one, and adjust the masks. And now we have a nice brightness. And now I can use color balance RGB for uh, improving of contrast and also of saturation. So the first thing I will enhance the contrast a little bit of the scene, something like that. And now we need to be careful of how can we add the, the saturation here. If you are adding um, the highlights, we will have the same issues, same issue as before. But um, we can add saturation first through the global, global vibrance. <coughs> For example, we can go with the global, global vibrance a little bit higher. And also maybe in shadows, tiny bit, but remove that saturation from the highlights so that we have something like that. And now let's try a bit further with global vibrance. <coughs> and maybe even more in uh, shadows and maybe in the midtones a little bit. Okay, now have we have a little bit uh, saturation. I think that's enough, but I'm not sure if we have a nice colors here. I think uh, we have on the blue, we have too much um, pinkish look. We can improve that with next instance of um, color calibration. And we can remove some blue, uh, some red from the blue by using input blue channel. Something like that. <coughs> Let me see. Uh, do we need to add some red? Okay, let's try that. We need to be quite careful not to induce again those issues in the blue channel. And I think we are oversaturating our photo now. So we need to go back with saturation a little bit. I don't know. Let's see. I need to, to play a little bit with those saturation sliders to get that saturation without uh, those issues on the gradients. And as you can see, we have now improved quite nicely uh, this area on the hair of our musician woman and here on the hand. <coughs> and what I also could do, I can use one more tone equalizer just for the highest highlights. Let's use that real quick. This time only for the as I said, highest highlights. Let's go down a little bit so that we can see a bit more details there. And I think, hmm, I think we could go back to the first color calibration module and remove a little bit of the gamut compression so that we have, I'm eyeballing this area here. Now if we remove that, and go to tone equalizer again. Just try to, uh, to find a nice sweet spot to have that good lighting here. And I think we are actually quite nice with our lights. We don't have too much gradients issues. And now we can use whatever. By the way, let me see how our 
noise looks like. We can improve that even better. We can go to the denoising module and go back with preservation of shadows so that we have a bit more denoising in the shadows. And if you want to be picky, you can also use one, let's try that, one new instance of the noising profile module. And this time we can use non-local means auto <coughs> so to remove even the rest of the noise but not too much not too high so we can go with the strength a little bit down so we have done that and maybe the last step is to add some local contrast so we can use diffuse and sharpen i can use my preset for clarity and maybe one more instance just for sharpening so I can use also preset the mosaicing AA filter and you can see we have now also that nice definition of the smoke in the background <coughs> let's compare that now to the old JPEG and as you can see it's a quite nice improvement so I won't touch anything else as you can see we also don't have any issues on those um, clipped areas here. You don't need to see any details uh, inside of that lamp. I will leave it there. Okay. I think we are finished with this one. So let's see what can we do with the next one. Okay, this one is a little bit easier. We don't have those issues with the blue channel, the blue light too much so I don't think we need any compression here and color calibration maybe just a tiny bit and um, what we also can do of course I'm using here filmic without those that option of preservation and prominence as default so you can also use that if you wish so I don't need to disable it here because it's already disabled but what I can do or what we can do is to uh, compress a little bit the highlights so as you can see we are now back into gamut and I would like of course to use lens correction denoising let's do that as uh, in the last example add one more with non-local means not to strength so let's see yeah that works good uh, how about contrast and saturation let's add a little bit contrast something like that I don't think we need to touch saturation here but I would like to brighten the photo a tiny bit so we can use also tone equalizer the preset oh it's Maybe it's too much. Let's see. Okay. Uh, how about? Yeah, we can we can leave it there, and maybe one more, just for the highest highlights. Uh, so just mask, so that we don't lose lose too much uh, information here around the lamp. And of course, we need some local contrast. I will also use two instances in this case. Let me see. We could, I will say. I don't think I don't. I'm not fan of uh, or saturated look, uh, even if this. As a concert with quite high saturated lights uh, I think it's always looking much better without we could all add some contrasts in the face so let's try that with new instance of a color balance HGB module and now we will mask the face only Let's see if that works. Uh, the bit feathering and also contrast of the mask. Let's improve the mask a little bit. We don't want to touch the highlights, so we can go to just that tiny bit. Oh no, I 
let's say something like that. Okay, disable mask indicator. And now we can go up a little bit with the highlights, but dark, go back with the shadows. Just to have a bit better definition in the face because it's important. Important part of the photo. Okay. And I will say we're good here. We don't need to do any changes. We can leave it there. Okay, compartion. <coughs> yeah, you can see we have much better definition in the area which is important with uh, the ex expression of the musician. You can see that clearly. But as I have said, I'm not fan of this kind of saturation. You don't need to do that. In this case, you could uh, um, add, but I'm, I don't want to do that. Okay, let's see how can we improve the last example. This one is also the easiest one from those three examples, because we have here possibility to um, white balance the photo, because I think her hair of our musician is white, and we can use that as a reference. And we have also the front light, which is neutral, so she is not illuminated with uh, some colored lamps only, only the background. So let's do that, but first things first, lens correction, denoising, let's improve that real quick, same like in last um, examples, one more instance and on local means, a bit less, let's see. Okay, and now we need to improve the white balance, so we can use now color picker and go to hair hair. Then we already have some nice um, color in the face, but we need to improve it even further. And to be able to do that, I think we can use a next instance of color calibration because, as you can see, we have uh, some pinkish color in the background. I'm not sure what kind of light is was uh, in this scene, but I assume that it was a bit more blue. So we can improve that. And we can also add some uh, red in the face so that we have a nice uh, skin color. Okay, we can use for that also our uh, channel mixer. And the red channel, we can go down a little bit with input blue. Maybe that one that much and add some reds. Okay, let's go a little, little bit further. Oh, that's too much. We don't want to overdo it. And now we have uh, also a quite high saturation of the blue channel, so let's deal with that so we can go to the color for this tab and desaturate a little bit of blue. Maybe add some saturation in the red channel and now we have more or less nice uh, skin tone. We can also use uh, the color calibration for um, brightness of the red channel because then we will brighten a bit more the skin. Okay, now we can go to the color balance RGB and uh, play with the contrasts a tiny bit. Something like that. And maybe also with saturation. So in this case, I will add only uh, vibrance. So let's see how this area looks like. I don't want that. So maybe we can add some gamut compression and also colorfulness go down with the colorfulness in the blue channel just a bit and add that back here and desaturate the highlights so something like that <coughs> um, let's go back and add a bit more colorfulness in the red channel and I will see we are okay now with colors. 
I don't think we need to change anything else. And what we also need to do is, of course, to add some... Um, what do we need? I think though we don't need here um, too much local contrast. I will only add a sharpen, sharpening. So we can use the mosaic king AA preset of the diffusion sharpen module. Well, let's see. <coughs> yeah, I will say that's okay. We don't need to do touch anything else. I think every um, other part is okay. What we also could do just to remove those um, lamps there, we can crop it. Well, let's see. Maybe that much. And now we are good. In terms of saturation and also in you know, terms of brightness. Maybe we can go a bit more. We have more room here. We can add a bit more brightness here. Okay. So, comparison. Let's compare those two. <coughs> and as you can see, we are quite nice. We have a quite nice photo. Okay, now you have learned a little bit how to deal with these quite difficult uh, light situations. As you have seen, the concert photography can be quite challenging undertaking uh, because of quite difficult light situation where you have different light sources with different colors. But you are not uh, without options here. As you have seen, we have used color calibration and color balance module quite successfully to get satisfactory results. And you can also use multiple instances of those modules to improve the colors uh, locally if needed. Okay, but before we concluding this episode, I would like to show you something interesting. The Troy Sabotka, who is originally developer of the filmic technique, which is implemented in, in, in Blender, um, and quite revolutionized the dealing with colors there. Is working on improvement of that technique. I think it's called now AGX. By the way, this technique was then um, adapted for Darktable by uh, Aurélien Pierre. And we have here um, one thread in the Blender forum uh, when we can see. Uh, the further, further uh, development. I'm not an um, expert, I'm completely lying man, but I like to watch what is going on and what kind of experimenting and results of experimenting uh, are we getting there. For example, you see here uh, we have some, some issue, issues, but here all looks much better. And this uh, problem with light, with uh, Difficult light situation is not only a problem by photography, it's also the problem by film industry. And I'm quite interested in what kind of um, improvement we will get in the future. I think um, um, at least one of the Darktable de developer is also engaged in discussion about this improvement. So it will be interesting what we'll get in the future. So I'm quite hopeful that uh, we will also have that kind of improvement integrated in Darktable. So, uh, let's say the last word about this improvement is not spoken yet. So, it will be quite, quite um, uh, interesting to see what we have in the future. Okay, but enough talking and thank you for watching. And if you have some questions, please be free to ask them in the comment section or go to the discuss discussion forum by pixels.us uh, and ask them here. Okay, thank you for watching and bye-bye.